Hello, this is going to be notes for AP Chemistry, pages 36 and 37. It's the start of a section on solutions. And so it makes sense to start with how we keep track of the concentration of solutions. So I mentioned at the beginning here, two common ones are molarity and percent. Molarity is the big one. So we should review that. So molarity, a lot of people do a big M for molarity. Some people put a line over the top. Either one of those is fine. It equals the moles of solute divided by the liters of solution. Things to keep track of here is remember the solute is the stuff that is being dissolved. So if you're dissolving salt into water, salt is the solute. It's typically the stuff you care about. And the solution is the entire thing. So the solution is both the solute and the solvent. And it's critical that molarity be in liters. Now, one thing I really like about molarity is that it's defined so specifically. It really helps avoid confusion. And whoever made this decision, I really made a, a wise choice here. And the other one has to be in moles. You can't do grams or something else. It has to be moles and it has to be liters. So that's molarity, which we normally use. Um, when it comes to percent, Hopefully they say what it's percent of. Sometimes you'll see percent by mass. Sometimes you'll see percent by volume. I've even seen it by pressure. And so that tells you what units to use. And for percent, just always do part over whole times 100. So if it's by mass, It'll be the mass of solute divided by the mass of solution, probably in grams, times 100 to give you that percent. If they don't say whether it's by mass or by volume or something else, you can usually make a, a reasonable guess based on what you're given. All right, now to some newer versions. Um, We've already covered, get this stuff out of the way. We've already covered mole fraction. We did it back in gases, so a couple units ago. It's the moles of stuff divided by the total mole. So it is just a mole fraction. So it's no more complicated than the name says. Now be aware, when we first covered it, we always made it the solute over the total. Or when we were doing gases, it was the gas of interest over the total amount of gas. It can be either the solute or the solvent on top. So if it says mole fraction solvent, that'll be the moles of solvent on top divided by the total moles. So you have to be careful on that. And that will come up in the homework. This one people usually think is a typo. The first time people see this, they go, oh, you, you mistyped it. It's, shouldn't it be molarity? No, this actually is the real thing. It's called molality, kind of sounds silly. People usually use a little m, but be careful because it looks like meters. In this case, you can think of this as a modification of molarity. So notice, we still have moles of solute. That's the same as molarity, but here's where it's different. It's kilograms of solvent. So this is a unique form of concentration in which you don't have the part over the whole. This one, you have the part over the other part. And there's a few situations where this is a better way to do it than molarity would be. And we'll see that in a few lessons. Density is the typical density, which is normally mass over volume, typically in grams per milliliter. 
the symbol, you might see this, sometimes people, rather than saying the density is, they'll put this little thing that looks like a P. That's a Greek row. And so um, if you see that, that's what they're talking about. It's a good idea to have water memorized as one gram per milliliter. Be careful though. We often teach this concept in first year chem and what students then think is they go, well, all liquids are one gram for one milliliter. No, it's just water. So be careful on that. Uh, parts per million, abbreviated PPM, or parts per billion, PPB, or parts per trillion, PPT, but not precipitate in this case. Um, think of this as the same as percent, but not based on 100. Cent means per 100. So, or percent means per 100. So, just think of it as the exact same thing as a percent problem, but not out of 100. It's out of a million or a billion or a trillion or whatever it is. And often you'll see this used for things that are very low in concentration. So, for example, the concentration of lead ions in tap water. We hope that that's amazingly low. And so you might see a water report that says the concentration of lead ions is 2.6 ppb, meaning parts per billion. And we'd, of course, want that to be as low as possible. If that was a percent, then, of course, that would be extremely toxic. Okay, some problems. This first one, we've got 12 grams of glucose. So that is our solute in 95 grams of water this is our solvent and if it doesn't say you just assume water is the solvent but if it does it might change it to be alcohol or it could be if it's something um, nonpolar it could be gasoline or oil or um, other more exotic things like carbon tetrachloride and benzene for practice, it says calculate the molality, because we've not seen that before, and the mole fraction of the solute. So they're defining that we're looking at the typical solute situation. So I took my grams of glucose, turned it to moles. I took my grams of solvent and turned it to moles. And I'm actually going to look at the mole fraction first. So I'm going to go right here. Well, you just take your moles of solute. 0666 divide by the total moles. Notice the 5.34 was a combination of both of these things from the top. And that's it, 0 0.0125. The units technically cancel. So you can write it like this with no units. Or if you wanted to be more clear, you could say 0 0.0125 moles of glucose per mole total or something like that, if you desired. Um, kind of depends on what you're doing. Molality, just think of molarity. So we start the same with our moles of solute. But this time you divide by the mass of solvent in kilograms. And that's another important, important point on this. It must be in kilograms. It's part of the definition. So 95 grams is 0 0.0950 kilograms. And when you get your units here, notice it's 0 0.701. And you can put a little M if you want. Or you can define it. You can say moles per kilogram. Or if you don't want to hassle typing the division, you can say moles times kilogram to the negative one. And even though we don't do this very often, it's kind of weird looking. You might see this on homework problems or AP exam because this is a lot easier to type. I think they avoid doing the little m because I think it's feared that people will not know what that means because little m can mean too many things. Moles per kilogram is difficult to type. So moles times kilograms to the negative one is the easiest version. And I'm sure you'll see that in a few problems. Next one. It gives the density of an HCl solution to be 1.18 gram per cubic centimeter. And to remind you, cubic centimeters 
are the same things as milliliters always for anything. It's given the molality is 15.4, calculate the molarity. So what I recommend on this is to take the 15.4 molality and at first it doesn't seem like you know very much. You were like thinking 15.4, okay, what do I do with that? Well, there's a lot of information in here. So define it. What that means is 15.4 moles of HCl per every one kilogram of water. So you actually know two things. You know the moles of HCl and the kilograms of water, or grams if you prefer. I can take the moles of HCl, convert to grams of HCl. Since it was 15.4 molality, we can assume one kilogram. So that's a thousand grams of solvent. You add those together, and now we know the mass of the solution. We can now use density. Here's my mass of solution. I use density as a conversion. You can do that, or you can do D equals M over V if you prefer. That gives me my volume of solution, convert it to liters. And now we take the moles that we knew the entire time, divide by the liters, and we get 11.7. Now notice that the molarity here of the same exact solution is lower than the molality value. And that is usually how it works out. It's one way to think of it is molality is per solvent. Molarity is per the whole solution. So it makes sense that molarity would be a smaller number. Um, and I, I mentioned this right here, just to make sure people realize we're talking about the exact same solution. A 15.4 molality of this particular HCl solution is the same as 11.7 molarity, no difference. We could also calculate its percent, its mole fraction, and so on, and they'd all be the exact same solution. Moving along, this is one that <coughs> actually is practical. It says solutions directly, uh, introduced directly to the bloodstream have to be what's called isotonic. That is, they have to have the same osmotic pressure. Now, we actually haven't talked about osmotic pressure. We're going to be doing that in a few lessons. That pretty much just has to do with the concentration of dissolved things should be similar. And what this is saying is that you wouldn't want to put a really concentrated solution into the blood. It would cause problems. And likewise, you wouldn't probably want to put a really dilute one. You want it to kind of match the blood. And it says an aqueous sodium chloride solution has to be 0.90%. Notice it says by mass, isotonic with the blood. So it's saying that that would match the blood and you could give this um, by IV to a patient that needs it. What is the molarity? So you can ignore all that background medical terminology. All they want us to do is take a 0.90% by mass solution and convert it to molarity. And they say just to assume the density is one gram per milliliter. Well, what you wanna do, anytime you're given a percent, you always wanna assume 100, whatever the total is. In this case, it's grams. So assume 100 grams of solution. That means a 0.90% is 0 0.90 grams of solute. And the remaining is the solvent. So 0 0.90 grams of NaCl and 99.10 grams of water. So again, when you're told this, it doesn't seem like you're told enough. But if you break down what 0.90% means, you actually have two pieces of information. Now, I made a note here. We don't actually need this for this problem. But I wanted to show you because sometimes you will need it depending on what's asked. So we're going to molarity, so grams to moles. We're assuming 100 grams total. They told us the density, so we can convert 
to the milliliters ends up just being the same thing. And now you can do molarity because molarity is moles divided by volume in liters. And in this case, it's 0.15 molarity in a CL. And the problem, it didn't ask for NaCl, it asked for sodium specifically. So it's 0.15 molarity sodium ions. Now, just for the sake of discussion, it's also 0.15 molarity Cl minus ions, but they didn't ask that. Another thing to be aware of is if they asked for the ion concentration, let's just say they said they wanted the ion molarity, the total ion molarity would actually be the two things combined. It would be point, no, it's a bad point, point three zero molarity ions in solution, because you'd add them together. If they asked for NaCl, it would be this here. Okay. Uh, one thing that's worth taking a look at is page 260 in our textbook. It's got a chart of assumptions. And by assumptions, I'm referring to things like this right here, where we assumed 100 grams and it broke it into these two pieces, or that other problem where it gave us the molality here, but that we can assume one kilogram of solvent based on that. And that if you don't make these assumptions, you get stuck and you can't finish the problem. Uh, it says, theory question, if temperature affects volume, which it does a little bit when it comes to liquids, which concentrations are temperature dependent? In other words, which concentrations will change? It turns out it's molarity and density because both molarity and density have volume in their calculation. But what isn't affected is molality does not have volume in its calculation, so it stays constant. Um, percent by mass would be similar, there's no volume. And all percents cousins like parts per million would be the same if it's by mass. So you can start to see where molality can actually be quite useful is because it's not affected by temperature. Uh, next one, as solution become more dilute, what happens to the difference between molarity and molality? By difference, I mean the difference between the numbers. Well, the difference, if you look at it, molarity is per solution, the entire thing. Molality is per solvent. So it turns out at very high concentrations, these values have a significant difference, like we saw in that calculation earlier. But as things get more and more dilute, the amount of solvent starts to become almost equal to the amount of solution because you don't have very much solute. So as things get more dilute, the difference between these gets smaller and smaller. Uh, if you dilute things enough, you can even get to the point where with sig figs, they could be the same. All right, uh, we got the homework down here and just a hint, there's a few times you have to assume 100 grams to get you going on the problems. I, that's because they're percent by mass problems. And that takes care of page 36 and 37.